Welcome back, I'm DRN and this is Mechabellum. We're going into game two of this week's tournament, and we're against Zek Vadith. Here we go. Ooh, Ariel's good and it comes with tanks, Rhino's not bad. Elite doesn't really suit the aggressive playstyle with that set of units. And Heavy Arm with Fang and Stormclaw is not for me. So let's go Aerial Specialist. Don't forget to say good luck, have fun. Just because I'm talking to the camera is no excuse for being rude. So we're up against Supply Specialist with Crawls and Mustangs. The normal play for him here would be to take Snipers. But he is playing Supply Specialist, he's got that extra 50 gold, so he could unlock something fancy. But if he does that, he's only buying one unit this turn, which is overall a loss for him, even if it wins him this round. I guess there's a chance he goes Arclan and then buys Charge Shot on it next turn, because he'll have an extra 100 gold by then. So, do we actually back our intuition here and assume he's going Sniper, and go and chaff ourselves? Yeah, I think I have to keep things simple. Unlock Crawlers, pop them behind the tower like this, because we're expecting Crawler on Crawler action. Hmm... Now I'm doubting myself and think he's probably got arc light to be honest. Well, let's find out. Snipers, okay. Glad we've got the crawlers. Need to trust my intuition. Your gut is normally right. Let's check what upgrades he's got. Anti-missile again, fascinating. I wonder why it's made such a resurgence. It does have assault marksman with fairly standard upgrades, though it does have the anti ice instead of double shot. We need to get through to his snipers before we lose too many units. We're good on the left, we're good on the right. Conclusion, we're doing fine. Pretty standard opening round, now it's going to start getting complicated. Will we get free unit cards or will we get items? Against Supply Specialist, I'm hoping for free units, so they can't use their extra 50 gold to buy something that we can't afford. Never mind, ooh, choices. None of our tanks have hit level 2, so the shield's a bit less valuable. Let's grab the Tech Specialist. You only need to get two technologies over the course of the whole game to break even. Let's grab some more Crawlers, we've got some late arrivers as well. Didn't like seeing his sniper shooting at our tanks. These snipers are a little bit forward. Is this an Assault Marksman play? Hmm. I'm debating between getting a technology on the crawlers or an extra unit of them. I think we need the bodies more than the power. Let's see what he does. Oh, don't forget to unlock a unit. More snipers. Is he going to go Assault or Range on them? Range, nice. That's what I was hoping for. We are fine playing standard into carry marksmen. It's a bit of a throwback to the early days of Mechabellum, but it's fine. We'll beat them with fangs with shields. Quite a wide formation, he's open to pressure through the midline. Hopefully we can get a few levels on these late arriving crawlers, so they can be level 2 before the fire arrives. To cook the board, and then they'll use subterranean blitz to survive it. I know I say don't level chaff, but the level 2 breakpoint for crawlers versus fire is huge. Here we go, let's see what difference the range makes on the snipers. They didn't catch out any of our arc lights, that's good. It means we've spaced things right. Yeah, these crawlers are going to get us the snipers. Perfect. All according to plan. So the range hasn't really done any- Ooh, he has got one of our arclights. Positioning wasn't quite perfect. Not a big deal, but it means these mustangs will live a bit longer. Right, so his response to this is probably going to be Vulcans next. Because we're running the chaff war and he needs chaff clear with body. Which is Vulcan or tank, and we've got tanks. And it's normally a bad idea to merry match your opponent if they've got experience or level leads. Instant melting point, I'm expecting Vulcans. Let's get another as well. He probably thinks we're going to take the Phoenixes. And I think he'll take the Phoenixes. Wheels within wheels. Isn't this so much fun? Trying to think from both your own point of view and your opponent's point of view. Let's get some fangs to walk out in front of the melting point as the round goes on. Did any of his snipers get a level up? Nope. If they had done, because we can only afford one set of fangs, I would have put the fangs on that side. So the biggest sniper doesn't get us the melting point. Let's see what he's thinking. Rhino, an assault marksman. Okay, we are off the beaten path. Here we go. It's Wissenzug. Nice. What easy sources of EMP do we have? I guess we've got the melting points. EMP barrage, or the tanks, but the tanks are quite short range. He's suddenly got maybe double or even triple the amount of health on the board. I'm hoping the melting points will be enough, but I'm not sure. He's going to clear our chaff so much faster now as well. This is an amazing turn for him, love it. The range of his snipers is now 110 meters, while our melting points is only just 115, which is going to give us problems because he can clear our chaff at 110 meters and walk those rhinos to our front door. 3,000 damage a shot, wow. So I'm thinking our next step is likely to be EMP on the melting points, and then get some serious chaff clear. And then late game we just win with overwhelming melting points, just dropping two a turn. And then get crawler production on the MP, so we get both chaff and carries. But that's late game. We've still got to get that. Ooh, I think maybe range on the melting points would get straight onto that sniper. Oof, we've got an unanswered rhino in the center. That's going to cause us problems. He's clearing our chaff so fast now with these assault marksmen. Their splash damage is nuts. We have problems, and they are rhino-shaped. 
backed up by assault marksmen. I have a friend who loves playing like this and it's terrifying. Hmm, these fangs are badly positioned, they should be in front of the MP. His chaff line just got so much further forward, so much quicker. Okay, choices. Hmm, I don't see any easy openings for underground threat on his side. He's probably just going to drop the heavy armor on a rhino, guessing the middle one. So do we go heavy armor as well? But that means we won't be taking underground threat. Are we okay with that? Yeah, we are. Oh, and I have misclicked. I was thinking about underground threat when I wanted to get the heavy armor. Undo button when? No, this is your fault, your mistake. Own it. We'll just have to make underground threat work. Ah, <sighs> can we afford a third set of fangs? If we get them, we won't be able to afford shields. Oh yes, we can. Okay. Forgot we had tech spec, making all our technologies 50 gold cheaper. Hmm, don't want to line up for fire, I don't want to bait him into Stormcaller. They'd already be good enough versus tanks and melting points. Not a perfect turn, but 90% isn't bad. No more free units to unlock. We are aerial specialist, I am an idiot. Could have had cheap boats, early phoenixes. It's fine, I was just happy playing Star and got distracted by the billions of snipers. We'd have just been playing into anti-air marksmen if I'd gone aerial too early. Replicate on the crawlers, interesting, has he gone underground threat? No, he's got the haste module. That's what he picked up this turn. He's just not put on a unit yet. If he's going crawler centric, we just drop a Vulcan here and a Vulcan here and put range on them. In his position, I think I would have gone deeper onto the rhinos, not the crawlers. But I guess he can see our melting points. But crawlers are so easy to answer. Watch me say that and I'll lose the game to crawlers here. <laughs> Spoilers if the video is titled Crawlers, so easy to answer. There might be irony in it. I have no idea what this video will be called. You want to name it after a defining moment of the video without spoiling it, it's quite an art. Here we go, I don't think we've done enough to win this round, but it will set a solid foundation for future rounds. Which is maybe the wrong way to play, because he can see what we're building to as well. This rhino in the midline is still unanswered, and these fangs still too late. We can speed them up with mechanical rage, or we can give the melting points range to make them sit further back. Or both, or neither if there's a more pressing problem. And the more pressing problem right now is his chaff. Melting points busy shooting at our own feet. It's a disaster. But if we can clear his chaff faster, we can turn this whole game over. He's got to know Vulcans are coming, right? The Fangs are holding the line for a good while. Just a shame that line is so far back. Because our opponent's skirmish line is so far forward. That's why you need the balance of chaff and chaff clear. Right, here we go. Let's get back into the game. Ooh. I want senior attack specialist, but I'm not sure we've got the money for it. We have to answer his chaff this turn. Mm, feels bad letting it go. Could take the free missile strike, but I think we need the money. Because two Vulcans cost 800, and then we're going to need technology next turn as well. You know what? Forget next turn. Let's get something this turn, so that he has to respond to us. Let's go with the fire bombs, because his units have to walk forward, and it's really good for picking off the Mustangs. Range is objectively better in most situations, but right now I don't know Vulcans getting stuck in a rhino while our melting points are busy shooting at crawls on the ground. Because that would be a tragedy, and a comedy all rolled into one. I think a little bit wider is fine, though we're kind of baiting crawls on the flank to distract the first set of rockets. But I'm not worried about the first set of rockets, I'm worried about the middle round. He's gone with a load of level ups and more crawlers, perfect. So he didn't see the Vulcan coming. Or maybe he just doesn't care, he's going for weight of numbers. He's put them on the front row, I think that's a bit of a waste. They're going to go straight into the tanks. They won't really change anything. I think they'd have been better on the flanks, I'll be honest. Will he go temporary range again? Because this is how we catch up economically. It's very powerful on Assault Marksmen who are crying out for range, but it's 100 gold not spent on the board. Every turn you take it, that's why I only take it in the final turns normally. Ooh, and an extra Marksman. That would have been great on a flank with a set of crawlers. Is he just going to drop it naked? Nope, it's joined the sniper line on the front right. Temporary range and speed. Powerful, but thank you. 150 gold in our pocket. Nice. Okay, here we go. Let's see how much of a difference our Vulcans make compared to his front row crawlers. Look at how fast everything he's got is. They are sprinting out of the gates. Here come the firebombs. Yes, nice. That's taking so much pressure off us. There we go. Melting points already on Rhino is perfect. That's what we wanted all along. Look at the difference two Vulcans make. It's insane. Suddenly he's the one with naked snipers. Now our melting points get to walk around and do whatever they want. Come on, we need to get the melting points onto the snipers now. We're doing better, but I think the melting points need range still. The damage from Assault Marksman is pretty nuts. 
Go on, get him before he kills you. Go on, go on. Nice. Whew, that was close, but we're on the left side. Look at how fast they're going. They look so silly. <laughs> the animation just looks wrong when it's sped up like that. Okay, so we're expecting Subterranean Blitz and his crawlers to try and dodge the fire. But it won't be enough if they're not level 2. Ooh, we need the money and we need the money now. That means the scorpion. And I'm afraid away you go to the great scrap heap in the sky. We need the cash. Much as I love scorpions, it wouldn't be much use here. Whereas two more Vulcans are just what the doctor ordered. Let's get range on these fellas so when they're clearing up the end of the round, they don't have to walk towards the snipers. And much as I'd love to level up our melting points and get those double stats, we need a third one to answer this rhino in the middle, or our shiny new Vulcans will just get stuck. Right, I'm expecting distraction chaff over here and over here, but our two Vulcans in the middle will pick up the slack and cover instead, so that our melting points are unleashed. We've got 50 left over, but I'm going to be bold and just hold it for next turn. Let's see what he's thinking. Ooh, wasps. Good choice. Chaff that's immune to fire, but you only win one turn with those, and then I buy mustangs of my own, you scuppered. Missile interceptor on his mustangs and elite on his snipers. Interesting. Really glad we've got the range on our melting points to counter the snipers. I don't think missile interceptor is that efficient versus this many Vulcans. But again, I've been away for six months, it might have changed. I'm thinking we've got EMP on the melting points though. I know the Mustangs will shoot down some of the EMP, but I don't think they'll get them all. And then it's just even more projectiles for them to be distracted by. And it'll be good versus the snipers. We are very off meta right now. And I love it, because we're learning new things and new tricks. Even more snipers, wow. This is Route 1 football. We are Assault Marksmen with a few other units. Deal with it or die. Ooh, push and temporary range and temporary speed. That is so much economy into our pocket. He gets 300 less next turn, and he spent 150 here that isn't on the board, so that's gone as well. Right, we need to win this, see if the fire still gets to the Mustangs, or if their interceptors keep themselves safe. Looks like the missiles are still getting through, the world is burning. I think this is just too many Vulcans for him. And our midline melting point has gone to that Rhino, nice. Now let's see, can we get through the Wasps before he gets through to our melting points? Because these snipers have got elite now, they shoot from even further away, and they shoot even harder. Ooh, there goes the right side melting point. No, the wasps are enough, they've bought in time. We have to shred those with mustangs. I was hoping our fangs would be enough, but it's not. Ooh, that said, we get onto the snipers. Nah, that's not enough. It's close though, we're getting that. And his economy is in shambles. Ooh, bombard is good, wasps of our own, but I think laser sight would be really good. And while I think my first instinct was to put it onto a melting point, I'm actually going to put it on some Mustangs. And do we need these Mustangs to be elite? Do we need them to be level 2? We'd make them murder the Wasps, and even better at the Chaff Clearing, but I think we need the money spent on our Giants, because they'll be the ones deciding the round for us, once we've cleared the skies of the Wasps. Right, these Mustangs are going to be anti-air units, but do we want the anti-air tech on them? Hmm. No, once again, I think it's range before anti-air, life before death. Because we want them to be alive later on into the round. And if they don't have range, they run forward too much. Let's put the laser sights on these guys. They'll cover the wasps on both sides as well. And let's level up the melting points in front of the tower. Double the stats, half the price. Can't say fairer than that. And now we are playing for our life. So let's get the push ourselves and temporary range. And I was thinking missile, but he's got anti-missile on those mustangs. But they're so far back, I think we can still pick off this front row quite easily. Hmm, I think maybe we should have spent that on a level up on a unit. Yeah, these fangs are doing work. I would have liked to have leveled them up, actually. These guys did the most damage, they get the level up. But I have a sneaky feeling most of that was just pumped into a rhino that's going to die anyway. Let's see what he's thinking. Ooh, more Mustangs right at the front. That's going to catch our missiles. I swear whenever I go for missile plays, it's cursed. And his snipers are getting quite high on levels. There's a subterranean blitz. But they're only level 1, so they'll still die to the fire. Here we go. Ooh, one missile still made it through. Mustang anti-missile is so unreliable. Ooh, come on Mustangs, keep the wasps away. We need to get our melting points with the snipers pronto. Come on, clear these rhinos. Ooh, he's getting through. Our Mustangs got stuck on the rhinos. Didn't really think about that. Lost all our Vulcans. There was a melting point. Can we hold the line? Come on. So tanky. Yes, we're getting that. 
that was closer than I wanted it though. At least we're taking chunks out of his health now. When he beats us it's a scratch, when we beat him it's a chunk. That's why you gotta play giants. Whew, three units again, I swear it comes around so fast. Hmm, what's good versus his board? I think I'm happy to go Wraith here. It's tough enough that it should be able to survive some sniper fire, but it also has splatter the wasps to help clear every little bit of chaff as well. Let's take DGN B and it's so cheap. An enemy's caught in its bubble, go at 40% less speed, deal 30% less damage, and take 30% more damage. It's quite a big turnover. The only problem is wraiths are quite suicidal because they're so short ranged. 350 left over. What to spend it on? Are the tanks doing much? Not really, they're just getting picked off by the snipers instantly. It was the Mustangs that did the most, nice. Let's level these guys up then. Mm -hmm. So our entire board is basically hinging on Mustangs and MPs. Got a push, we're both so low on health. If he goes for a missile player, are we okay? I'm not sure. We'd lose our front row of chaff and our chaff clear. Let's get some shields down. Oh, don't forget to use underground threat. This could have been a double health melting point for the whole game, but never mind. We've been losing this right side too fast every round, let's try and shore it up. What's their pathing like? Yeah, I'm okay with this. 50 left over, let's balance out these fangs. Make sure they're doing good damage, yeah, it'll do. Okay, let's see what he's thinking. Frontline wasps and charge shot phoenix. Oh no, ranged phoenix, what? I was expecting a missile play, but this is, I guess, similar. Very glad we got the shields down. Ooh, those phoenix are going to pick up our wraiths very early. So much going on. Fire still lands, that's good. Wish we had anti on the mustangs. These wasps are taking a long time to die. Whoa, a wraith just vanished. Guess I didn't respect the marksman enough, wow. How does he still have chaff this late into the round? We've got so much chaff clear. Oh, we're down to two melting points, this is bad. If they fall, this is game over. Come on, you're level two, you beasts. You can do it, come on. Yes, no tower. Oh, it's close, he might have got us. Oh, this is brutal. Still in it, lucky number eight. I really thought the wraith would last a bit longer there. Oh, he goes for the acid or the smoke. Ooh, the smoke would be good for us, but he's probably going to shield where his sniper stand anyway. I can smoke our side of the board. But this is only going to get the Mustangs. Everything else sits further back. If I do it any further than this, though, he's going to shield it. Ah, uh, risk versus reward. Let's get two more melting points. There are carries. Spread the load across more carries. And they've got a good bit of health as well. These phoenixes are too close to these wasps. They're inside missile blast radius. I think the wasps are so close to the front, the mustangs can't save them. And the phoenixes have 3,000 health, while the missiles do 5,000 damage, so it's going to be a one-shot. Unless he gets shields on them. He doesn't have shields as an option. Right, we need to shields ourselves, otherwise the acid or the smoke will murder us. Two hundred and fifty left over. What can we do? We can level up the towers. They don't die from being sneezed at. Final fifty. Let's try and find some units that are doing damage. Oh, almost forgot to push. Temporary range. Let's get attack up from the tower, it makes our Mustang stronger. I really should have brought the health up by now, but never mind. Let's do an insurance missile as well, in case anything gets too close. What's he going for? War Factory with anti-missile! Oh no! That's going to save his chaff completely. Oh, it's not anti-missile, it's rate of fire! What? Go on, melting point, get onto him. Oh no, he's getting hit by the sniper. He's too far forward. No! We've barely even scratched the War Factory. This is bad. Smoke's done okay, we've still got a race standing. And what? We've killed this war factory? Legend of a melting point, but I think he's gonna die. This mammoth war factory is gonna be the decider. Melting points are keeping up with the range, but only just. Come on. Yes, that's huge. We've done it. Will this be enough to kill him? It's gonna be close. Yes, GG.
I thought he had us then. I thought those war factories had anti-missile. And his chaff line was just going to sweep over us. Right. Whew, that was intense. I was not expecting war factory with launcher overload so it shoots faster. I really thought it had anti-missile to begin with. And then it was going to shoot down our incendiary bombs. We were so lucky there. Don't think I deserve to win that. Glad I noticed he put these two too close together. Because the round before those phoenix was doing work all round long. These melting points, what heroes. This one on the left was a tiny bit too far forward and was getting picked off by that sniper. It needed a chaff line in front of it really. Maybe if I put these corner crawls a little bit further forward it would have been fine. But you don't think that far ahead at the start. I think the winning play for us was the Mustang play actually. It's such a hard counter to the wasps. And everything else that he had was dying to the fire on the ground anyway. I think melting point isn't the correct carry into assault marksman. But we made it work and I bought them before he went assault marksman. Because the problem is you need chaff clear to support them. While the assault marksman come with chaff clear built in. These fangs did a lot of work for us. I believe fangs with shields are the best chaff in the game. Even though I play crawlers every game and don't always play fangs. Two more sets in front of the melting points would have been smart. Couldn't afford to let the snipers get into the melting points. I was expecting these phoenixes to be charged shot. I was expecting these very forward phoenixes to be charged shot phoenixes. Because it doubles, almost triples the damage but costs them range. But makes them into giant killers and they would have been murdering our melting points if they got onto them. And he was already buying temporary range most rounds for his assault marksman anyway. Which is a high risk strategy because you fall behind economically. Whew, that was a really tough game. Much better showcase of Assault Marksman than the last game. Just shows what a small difference in positioning and ordering of buying the upgrades makes. These Vulcans with five bombs, I'm not sure it's the correct play. Perhaps I should have just gone range and then relied on the melting points to clear the rhinos. But it is the worst feeling in the world when you're watching a melting point shooting at crawls at its feet while your Vulcan is burning away slowly at a rhino. I probably need to put energy diffraction onto the melting points again. This Wraith Picker was terrible. I thought it would do more for us with the D-Gen Beam. And aura buffs are very hard to assess. It's very hard to see the exact impact it has. Photon emission is a bit clearer. Your units have double the health effectively while they're golden. I think the wraiths were the wrong choice, being honest. I can't remember what the other choices at the time were, but I think there will be one that's better. I didn't realise how vulnerable they were to these snipers. Which I guess makes sense, because the snipers are clearing the chaff so fast, there's nothing to protect them. So let me know what I should have picked there. And did you think I was going to win when you saw the War Factories land? That was crazy. I thought we'd lost for sure at that point. Especially when the melting point they just locked on the War Factory got picked off by the sniper. That was just agony, watching it die. Anyway, that was a fantastic game. Well played, Zach. I think you deserve to beat me there, and I got very lucky. Let's see how much comp power we've gained or lost. 1,700, nice. Ooh, and 12 MMR. Good stuff. So Zach's a 1,600 MMR player. Good game. Let's see where we're at in the tournament. Ooh, there's some familiar names here. And we are fifth. Nice. Well, thank you for watching as always. This was a tough game. Let me know what I did wrong, or if there's anything I can do to improve the video. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next round.